I watched this video from Theo probably about a week, week and a half ago. It's a great video, but I did find myself come away from it feeling like something was missing from it. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. It felt like maybe there was something that was stopping this kind of small PR utopia from being a reality in practice. Well, today it kind of hit me, so I thought I'd jump on and share my thoughts. Um, I'm not going to watch the whole video with you guys. I'm not going to explain why PRs, why big PRs suck or uh, what stacking is. You should check out the original video. It explains it much better than I'd be able to. But what I'm going to do is we're going to watch from where kind of it sparked um, that trailer thought for me and hopefully it, it sparks it again. So uh, yeah, let's do that. Stacking allows you to skip the wait. Stacking parallelizes your development and code review work streams, so you don't need to wait for the, your previous changes to merge before building on top of them. This one's huge for me. I have a terrible habit of making a PR, and before it gets reviewed, just continuing to build things on top of this. I was literally doing this a few days ago where I overhauled a bit of the upload thing open source repo. It immediately went and used the new minimal structure I had built to start creating a new feature. In traditional workflows, this would have been merge conflict hell, but with stacking workflows, it's just kind of the norm yeah absolutely a nuisance i find myself doing this all the time especially when i build a feature i might want to share that feature um, it might be something that other services or classes depend on you know object oriented programming there's obviously a lot more well the intention would be maybe to share kind of abstractions uh, depending on what you're building at the time um, and i found myself wanting to jet ahead and if you've got this massive pr that's a big problem there are some big assumptions and caveats to this um for stacking to kind of be um, applicable, but we'll kind of get onto that shortly. And it's been a really nice way to work. Imagine you're creating a feature that requires both a new server endpoint and front end changes. You've just written a PR that creates the endpoint on a new feature branch. In a traditional workflow, next you have to get that PR reviewed, merge into main, and once that's done, branch off main again before finally you can start working on the front end changes that rely on the server code you wrote. It's a hassle. With it's stacking, you don't have to do that. Pain. Instead, you just put your server changes up for review, create a new dependent branch, and continue working. It's so nice. It's so nice to have these types of flows where you can branch off of a branch. And theoretically, in this case, like feature B will say that is the front end and feature A is the server. A very common thing with this workflow is you get B approved by the front end team, but the back end team requests a change. Now I can go make that change, get it approved without touching this, without breaking the approval that exists. And then once both are approved, they both get flattened into main as one motion it's really it is really nice there are obviously again that there are some caveats some assumptions around this a lot of those assumptions for sounding based on kind of how he's speaking about it would be that you are using probably github and probably uh, a quite built out complex approval chain for maybe certain areas of the code uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. so when when he's talking about not breaking approval b you know not having to get that front end team to go back and and review that part of the code base um when you're making those changes to a the only downside i could see to this which i don't love because for me part of my workflow is like reviewing my own code so i put up a pull request and i, I can kind of see what that diff is i really enjoy that part of it um with this workflow, you are always going to have, as far as I understand it, maybe I've completely got it wrong, please do correct me in the comments, is that you're always going to have the changes from feature A in feature B. So, you know, you, you may have a small PR for feature A, but your your PR for feature B is always going to be as big. I mean, if you if you flatten them together, um, i.e. you've had your approval in feature A, it still feels like it could get a little bit messy. Um, there are, again, some more assumptions he'll go on to explain caveats that you do do this um this workflow using some automated tools because doing it manually can be a bit of a hassle really nice once both prs are approved you can either land them together or separately the stack is structured in such a way that one change can land ahead of the other change for example in this case the new server endpoint is safe to land ahead of any prs that introduce code invoking it this separation of concerns isn't done automatically by stacking but it's instead a side effect of forcing developers to break up their large changes into a sequence of smaller dependent changes and th th this is kind of the bit that really triggered really sparked um some thoughts for me Again, another big assumption is that you you have control over this model and that you, you know, what he's not saying is the underlying assumption is that you have some sort of sensible Git workflow um, or, you know, branching model in place already. Not a lot of organizations do that. A lot of organizations don't do Git well. They, they have... Uh, they have, like, say, uh, cultural or operational processes kind of inform based on 
maybe something like Jira, maybe something like the planning, billing, inform the way that these branches are split out. And as you just said, it empowers developers to split the work. If you don't have control over how that works planned or split or or requested to be developed, then you're going to find yourself in a scenario that you, you kind of can't follow this model because it the model only makes sense if you're in a position where you can actually control that separation you know to you or i or to, to, to many other people it might make it might be uh, assumed or obvious that you're in a position where you can control that but uh, i have found myself in positions in the past where you know a company's policy may be to um do a, a subtask per pull request or um there's been loads of crazy iterations on on kind of strategies for for getting work reviewed and merged and if you don't have that control, this is kind of nothing but a pipe dream. But that doesn't mean we can't go some way uh, to kind of organizing or at least trying to organize the code and the separation of that code in a kind of logical and meaningful way. You guys know how I feel about the words separation of concerns. I just posted a video recently about this. I think it's total bullshit. I wouldn't have used that terminology here because what I like about stack diffs and this workflow is I, as the developer, feel much more empowered to decide when to break up my work. When I use traditional... As long as you have the ability to break up that work. And I think that's what really hit me was that why does this feel like I? it's, it's unachievable? And I think that's mainly because there's been scenarios where that isn't directly controlled by engineering, potentially. Traditional Git workflows. First, I pull main, and then I make the new branch. I start working on the thing. Realize I actually want to make something slightly different. Decide I don't feel like renaming the branch, so I just keep working in that one. I put up the PR. I give the PR a name that somehow indicates that the name of the branch isn't relevant anymore. I write some notes about what is going on here. I then realize I want to add one additional thing that's different. I go make a new branch. I work on all that, and et cetera, et cetera. The, the pattern you'll notice here is very specific. I find that my workflow starts with Git and then I do code. With stack diffs, I start with the code and then I mark the code changes after. And I've had a much better experience working with stack diffs with this code first, commit second, where in Git workflows, branch first, code second tends to be the only way to keep things viable. It's Definitely is the only way to keep things viable. Because if you if you if you're kind of holding yourself to okay, this code has to be on this branch and you don't want to kind of overrun that kind of bounded context of, of what it is that you're intending to put on a branch, if you kind of do the code first and then you say, Hey, actually, I want to split this service or this, you know, these endpoints, these APIs to be as part of feature A, and then the cons the the services that consume those. Obviously, if you then go back and make changes to feature A, you've got to do the rebasing of feature B, which is kind of what he's going to get on to talking about in a moment, that doing it, stacking manually is tricky and probably shouldn't be attempted because it because it will end in hell. Um, yeah. So nice. I just saw a hilarious message from CJE. Uh, you've ever cloned the same repo three times so you can avoid stashing in work trees. Yeah. Yeah, I have. It sucks. And this workflow helps us avoid all of these pain points. It's so nice. Uh, wait, branched A from main, X from A, merge. No. So this is the difference. You don't merge X into A. This was, this was my assumption at the, at, at the start is that you, you, would, you would merge the, the kind of secondary stack into rather than continuing on. Like I said earlier, the only bit I don't like about it is actually not having this kind of reliable diff um, that's, that's just separated. So it's kind of like all the child or all the diffs before the, the kind of current working diff is going to be small and manageable with the end one, maybe not so much. So I'd definitely be interested to kind of hear more about that. X can sit there, A can sit there, and then once both are approved, they can merge together. Or you can merge the thing below and leave the thing on top, but you don't have to merge your PRs into each other. Your diffs stay separate. You merge together when you choose to. Let's get back to the article. Stacking manually is hard. Because stacked pull requests are dependent on each other, anytime there's an upstream change, every PR and the rest of the stack needs to be recursively rebased on top of one another to stay in sync. And do you guys know how I feel about rebasing? I don't trust it. I'm scared of it. Doing that manually is terrifying. It is possible to do, but the Git CLI wasn't designed for this workflow. And basically here, he just goes on to talk about a bunch of tools, um, the sponsor of his channel, Graphite, and uh, a few other open source tools that can help you do this stacking. But I think the key takeaway for me is that there really has to be some autonomy and some um, some flexibility around how organizations kind of dictate 
project delivery for this to be a viable reality. And I think it's completely normal, sensible and fair enough for him to not have gone into that in the video because it's just not what his video is about. But like in a kind of non-utopian practical reality, it, it, I think if anything, I felt more disheartened that there's, there are ways to potentially improve some of these workflows, but you know, kind of have to have that autonomy. So that's that's kind of frustrating. Um, but you know, if if you can get the support to implement things like this, potentially could save you a hell of a hell of a lot of time. Let me know what you think about stacking in the comments, and uh, yeah, catch you in the next one. Peace.